The future, a world where the quest for truth has ended. Do you believe in the supernatural, Mr. Vendarius? Surprise! The Shada will bring hell to Earth for thousands of years. Shock Division, kill them all! Spirit Blade, a full cast audio drama. Download the Legacy Edition of Spirit Blade for free at spiritblade.com. All right, buckle up. This car has a spoiler! Just got out of The Invisible Man. Uh, this is a, this is this was a Blumhouse movie that I did like, and uh, but it's still from Universal, um, and I would be, I'd be up for a sequel to this one because I really did enjoy this one that much that I'm like, ooh, more of this kind of movie for sure. Uh, I'm not sure what they would do in a sequel if we were working our way backwards from the you know spoilers that lie at the end toward, you know, the middle, maybe. Um, so she leaves with have, having killed him, um, using the, his own invisible suit to kill him, to kill Adrian. Uh, and she has the suit. So, I don't know, I saw, I, I jumped on, um, as I uh, often do, either during the credits after I've watched a movie and I'm still in the theater, or before the movie starts, I'll jump on my phone, look up a site that will tell me whether or not there's like a bonus scene um, anywhere during or after the credits, so I know whether or not I need to stick around. And one of the comments made at this one of the sites I usually go to, I think it's called The Wrap, uh, said, while the ending certainly does set up a sequel, you know, or a sequel bait or teases a sequel, I'm like, I don't think this ending does, you know, Yes, it has the unresolved issue of she has the suit, but she's not going to be, um, oh boy, that was some bad driving that just could have caused an accident right near me. Um, not bad driving on my part. It was two other drivers that like met in the middle of the road and, uh, <laughs> yeah, bad choices. Anyway, um... But I mean, you know, she's been through a lot. I'm sure she has like post-traumatic stress, but is that gonna make her psychotic and a villain and like the new bad guy in a movie and then they would call it the invisible woman or something like that. You know, I, so I don't think this is, this thing sets itself up for a sequel at all. In fact, it feels very complete in how Adrian was killed at the end. I was not expecting that, you know, that scene where you know, we saw so little of the actor that played Adrian until the very end of the movie. We started seeing a lot of him when they had dinner together at the end and he's trying to kind of reconcile and but doesn't want to admit that he's the one that did all the killing and stuff. Um, and uh, so I, it was really an interesting ending. I was like, where is this going? What are, what are they doing? And so I loved, you know, that she went off into the bathroom to kind of get herself cleaned up and she really was distraught, you know? Uh, she really was distraught. I don't think that was all, you know, something that she was faking. I mean, I guess it, I guess she did kind of snap out of it pretty quickly at the very end after making the 911 call and getting out of view of the camera. So, but we don't, you know, she's, she's like an architect by trade and so, or some kind of engineer by trade. So is she really gonna be that good of an actress? You know, um, or is that an element of her psychosis, you know, that she has now? I, I don't think that's what they're going for in the movie, is trying to establish that she is psychotic now. I don't think that's what they were going for. That's not the vibe I got. Um, rather, I do think the whole scenario of sitting down with him, trying to get him to admit what he did, and she's in the meantime surely reflecting on all that she's been through. So I think that she was actually emotionally distraught while she was trying to get him to confess. And when she went to the bathroom to get herself cleaned up, you know, she really was, you know, uh, still kind of a mess. But then very quickly, she must have gotten into the suit. And, uh, and then when he suddenly, you know, kills himself, it happens so quickly and so suddenly that I thought, oh my gosh, it's someone else. There is a third party here outside of Adrian and the brother that is bad, that is now covering his tracks or something. 
Um, but then I put that I put that to sleep pretty quickly. I was like, oh no, I'll bet it's her. I think she did this. And then, you know, they sealed the deal by showing us the suit in her duffel bag. And I think that's probably the only reason they showed us the suit, just to make it clear that yes, she is the one that did this just now, you know? Um, and uh, let me focus on driving for just a second here while I make this turn. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't think that it, it teases a sequel in its ending. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised at, you know, could Adrian still be alive after cutting his throat? Could paramedics get there in time? I mean, by according to movie logic, they could, but that would that's only movie logic. I think what we're meant to believe at the end of this movie is that this is the end of Adrian, and we're meant to feel a sense of closure. I mean, that final shot with her, you know, basically facing the camera, just stopping for a moment and just kind of taking it all in. It's weird, they, the camera hung on her for so long, I was almost like looking for, is there something I'm supposed to be seeing here? Is something weird gonna happen? Is something weird happening now that I'm just not picking up on, you know? Um, and I think that they were just trying to communicate um, a sense of like, okay, it's done. This is the end, she's now free, you know? Um, so anyway, yeah, Adrian's dead. Uh, and his brother is too. So that was a whole thing that like his brother actually was in on it and actually wore the suit at the a suit at the end there. I don't know if there's more than one suit or not. It's it's hard to tell. I mean, uh, it seems as though she was pro she was wearing the suit at the end there. You know, maybe the one that had been recovered. That's what's unclear to me because uh, didn't. Didn't the the cop friend of hers that was helping her record the the confession they were going for at the end? Didn't he say that they had the suit as evidence? They have some kind of a suit, and um, well, maybe he knew that she had the suit at that point. But he was talking about it like, no, this is how we make the case for your um, for your freedom. I can't remember. I'd have to go watch it again. Was he saying, I think he was, you know, I think he was saying that when they were at the police station. And so then maybe he helped her and got the suit out of the evidence locker or something. So there's a lot of questions I have about exactly how things played out the way they did at the very end in that last scene. Um, that's probably what was going on. That's pro He was probably kind of off the books helping her to try and get this confession. He let her get the suit even though the police had recovered it as part of the crime scene um yeah yeah anyway uh if they make a sequel they're gonna have to tread really carefully uh as far as like what they choose to do because i don't know how you get a sequel from this um but yeah the brother uh i you know suspected him from almost from the very beginning like I'm really from the very beginning from the very first scene we see him in I'm like I think he's in on it then they threw off my suspicions by having him talk about how he didn't like his brother you know in, in that follow-up scene and how um, he uh, and I like this actor by the way if you haven't seen The Patriot on Amazon um, it's a uh, I think a really solid show it it was cut short before its time but I do think that the the end of the um, the final season that they produced, even though it's, you know, I, I think not supposed to be an end. I think it has its own sense of finality to it. I was, I was satisfied. I didn't feel like, oh, it's ruined, you know, because it's such a cliffhanger, you know, whatever. So anyway, if you, if you found that actor interesting at all, he plays a very likable uh, character in Patriot, um, and on uh, the Patriot, I think it's called, or maybe it's just Patriot without the, anyway, that's not what this video is about. Um, but I, I like that actor. And anyway, um, they, yeah, so they threw off my suspicions when he talked about not liking his brother and being a victim of his brother and stuff like that. But it wasn't long after they, you know, threw off some of those suspicions that I was like, well, that could just be the movie throwing off suspicions. I mean, surely Adrian would put up with his, with his brother bad-mouthing him, um, especially if those things weren't 
the true way that he felt. But even if they were, Adrian would be content to let his brother badmouth him. Maybe their relationship wasn't that great. I mean, Adrian did end up uh, allowing him to be killed in the end, you know, and kind of setting him up maybe to be killed. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so the, the reveal of him being in the suit was not a shocker to me. There was part of me that that wondered briefly if Adrian maybe really was dead and all of this was his brother um, and him him being the one that's truly psychotic, you know. Um, it's kind of a shame because this movie does seem so buttoned up and resolved and complete. And that's not a shame, actually. If this is the only movie they ever make, I think it's a great one. For this kind of concept, I would not expect the movie to have this interesting of characters and performances, especially from the leading lady, and to have a villain who, he's not just kind of like a, a psycho, mustache twirling psycho. He's a psychotic person that we can kind of understand from real relationships in real life where people become overbearing and maybe they don't become killers and obsessive like this one does, but some of them do. So the, the, the psychology of the villain is a very real world kind of psychology. It's not, he's power mad and plans to use this technology to do all kinds of military deals with terrorist nations. And so, you know, it's not, they don't go that route. It's not about the technology. Um, and so I think that the villain is very interesting in that way. And, um, and so it's kind of a shame because, you know, he wasn't, it wasn't just that he was invisible. It was what he did to her life, what he was able to do to her life because he was invisible, you know, that, that really made him such a, a menacing villain that he wasn't just being a ghost and spooking her out. He was destroying her life and everyone around her, you know? That's what made him so interesting to me as an enemy, as the as a boogeyman, you know? Um, and, it, you know, making her look insane. I mean, it was like so much more than it could have been with just the simple premise of a bad guy who has a vendetta who can be invisible, you know? That could be so much more simple than like so many movies we've seen before. So, um, in that way, it's a great movie, very satisfying. I might even buy this one at some point. Um, I might, I don't know, we'll see. It, it would probably be a bargain bin purchase, but I, I wouldn't mind having it in my collection to share with other people and rewatch myself, you know, a time or two. Um, yeah, uh, the, the death of the sister, Speaking of just totally destroying her life, oh my gosh, that totally took me by surprise. Usually in movies like this, there are little tells that the film will give you before something like that happens. I really felt like that conversation was gonna go on for just a little bit longer, you know? Um, and suddenly that knife appeared and I'm like, what the crap? You know, it was, it was so shocking. Um, I was grabbing my face with a jaw dropped for like at least a minute, at least like a full 60 seconds watching the rest of that scene unfold after the sister was killed. Oh my gosh, you know. Um, so stuff like that and what he was doing to her psychologically is what gives this movie its staying power, What what's what makes it, I think, worth repeat viewings because it's it's intense, it's dramatic in a way that is not dependent upon jump scares. And it has some jump scares, like when she's in the attic and throws paint, you know, down the, the porthole. Uh, that was a great moment and definitely got a jump out of me. Because uh, you didn't see the paint coming. You know, she was just peering down there and then suddenly she threw a bucket of paint, which I didn't see her grab, I didn't see her prepare that. And so it all happened at once, you know, that the moment itself was a surprising moment. It wasn't just a jump scare. It was a surprising moment, you know, and I didn't have time to process what was going on. It's just like, oh my gosh, there it is. You know, it was, you know, uh, that was like a really nice jump scare. Um, but, the, you know, so much of the movie was not at all dependent on that, you know. Um, it was dependent on her performance, you know. Uh, anyway, really enjoyed this one, especially the extra kind of like legs that the movie had at the end with the whole trying to get a confession out of him. Um, 
yeah, it, that was kind of like a little mini final act that I wasn't expecting in this movie that I really enjoyed. So I think that's about all I have to say in terms of spoiler content. I'm almost at my house now, so time to record my review. The future, a world where the quest for truth has ended. Do you believe in the supernatural, Mr. Vendarius? Surprise! The Shada will bring hell to Earth for thousands of years. Shock Division, kill them all! Spirit Blade, a full cast audio drama. Download the Legacy Edition of Spirit Blade for free at spiritblade.com.